The 2024 Lincoln Nautilus is absolutely stunning. I love what Lincoln's done with this vehicle. Refreshed exterior, refreshed interior, new powertrain options, and so, so many things you need to know. And in this video, I'm going to unpack this thing and show you everything. The interior, exterior, all the new technology and how it works. But if you're looking for a shorter walkthrough video, you can find that down in the description of this video, along with the build link, the contact details for Yorkdale Lincoln, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. The drivetrain for the 2024 Nautilus is unchanged from the 2023 model. So it doesn't matter if you're in Canada, the States, this thing is strictly going to be available with Lincoln's intelligent all-wheel drive. There's no front-wheel drive version available. As always, there's a series of selectable drive modes that you can navigate through right down the center stack. And that's going to play with things like your traction control, stability control, and even your shift points when you're in that sportier performance mode instead, which I absolutely love. Now inside this thing, you're going to find out available with 19s, 20s, 21, or 22 inch wheels, depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. This one has the Jet Appearance package, which has this 22 inch wheel, and the style of it, I am absolutely in love with. The look of this thing is really neat. The front end styling of the Nautilus is completely different from the 2023 model. You still will find the LED headlamps, but there's a beautiful LED light bar that goes all the way throughout. Lincoln logo in the middle there is also something that can be lit up later on at night, which looks great. On top of that, the new grill, I think looks really cool. It's like these little kind of like bubble cutouts there, but a nice honeycomb design overall. Way taller profile in comparison to last year's model. There's a lot of technology you're going to find standard in most trim levels of the 2024 Nautilus. You've got the forward sensing system that's there the front facing camera, the side mounted cameras, the backup camera for a full 360 view. So there is a lot of similar tech from the 23 to the 24. With one other thing is that the 2024 Nautilus now also features Lincoln's Blue Cruise system. And that's complete hands-free driving, which I tried it out earlier, is an incredible system. But if you want to walk through on the adaptive cruise of the Blue Cruise system, you'll find that down in the description of this video. Underneath the hood, of the 2024 Nautilus, there are two engine choices that are available. Slightly different than what you were gonna find in the 2023 model. So you've got the two liter turbocharged engine, and then there's also a two liter. Now it's also paired with a 100 kilowatt hour battery. It's pretty crazy. So that other engine is going to be a traditional hybrid. So it's not a plug-in hybrid, but it does give you a good bump in fuel economy, which I'll touch on in a second. It is super clean and extremely <laughs> well organized underneath the hood here. There's no engine cover, but still the overall look is fantastic. And power wise, it's not much different from the 23 to the 2024. The two liter, the regular two liter turbo pushes out 250 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque, which is pretty damn good. And then the two liter hybrid is going to push out 310 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque combined. And that's with the two liter engine and then that 100 kilowatt hour battery on top of that. So power performance wise, they are pretty much neck and neck with one another. The big question is whether or not you're going to want to look at some fuel savings. But before I get there, the warranty inside of Lincoln vehicles is pretty solid. Your basic warranty is going to be a four year 50,000 mile or 80,000 kilometers with the powertrain getting bumped up to six year 70,000 mile and 110,000 kilometers instead. So warranty wise, you're covered and you can always look at purchasing prepaid maintenance plans right at time of ordering. You can also extend that program if you'd like to looking at your basic or your powertrain warranty when you purchase your ride. The Nautilus hasn't really changed much size wise from the 2023 to the 2024 model. Slight difference in the length and a little bit in the height, but otherwise it's pretty much the exact same profile. There's just so much that they've done to upgrade this thing. Man, I love the new highlight there. Just very aviator-esque with that basic style, but a new font used for the badge itself. The side view mirrors here do feature turn signals, the blind spot monitoring system, they're heated, and they're power folding. You still do have the five digit number pad on the outside there, so you can lock using the bottom two, unlock, and then the new fancy handle. Oh, but look at that. Interior is beautiful. I'll touch on that in a second. But you've got this nice highlight that follows through. Mary's what's going on part of this new 48 inch screen. But along the door, you've got this nice metallic highlight, your basic unlock lock buttons, 
memory buttons. So you could set up your side view mirror, your steering wheel, and the seat the way that you'd like. And then you're gonna push and hold either one, two, or three for it to remember your own personal profile. There are a few different speaker systems that are available. And this is the 203A, so it's the Revel Ultima. So it's the 28 speaker audio system that I'll let you listen to in a minute. Love it though, style is great. You've got your power fold and side view mirror buttons, your basic window controls, side view mirror controls, your door handle there, a little bit of storage. You've got the Lincoln scuff plate along the side. And then as always, you've got your, window, uh, your trunk release figure out what's going on with the brightness of the cluster screen. I guess that 48 inch screen, I don't know if I'd call that a traditional cluster. <laughs> and then you can figure out what's going on with your running lamps. This thing has an electronic parking brake. There's the hood release there as well. So you're just pulling twice in order to open up. But that seat is beautiful. And that's the 24 way perfect position seat. You've got a few different buttons that are available here. So you can move the seat forwards, backwards, up or down. You can adjust the backrest. There's four way lumbar support. And then this also doubles as a button to control massage chair seats and a few more options too. But I'll touch on that, some, that one once we get inside. You can also adjust each individual leg cushion if you wanted to. The steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be power telescoping. And as I mentioned, with memory, which is nice. You can see there, teeny little storage tray underneath as well. But, ooh, gotta do this. Taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as I guess, the cluster screen inside of the Lincoln Nautilus. Now this is going to be for the 2024 plus model. And I gotta say, I love the new look and layout. So, I mean, obviously the big glaring thing is going to be the steering wheel itself rather than a completely rounded wheel. It's more of like a flat top, flat bottom steering wheel instead. It does take a little bit to get used to it, but once you do, it is a really nice feel. You can see even from the basic design elements there. So just in behind, you can kind of see my fingers kind of moving there. So it's not fully connected throughout the pads here either, which is neat. Got one thing to point out, steering wheel will be heated. You can toggle it on through there if you want to. So there's the button there you could use, or you can use the voice command prompt. Turn on the heated steering wheel. Got it, turning on the steering wheel heater. So you, you can have it so that it'll automatically turn on the steering wheel heater. You can do things like, turn on your heated ventilated seats and adjust climate and things like that. It is really neat. But the heat is all the way around. The steering wheel in this thing is going to be a power telescoping. So just by your left knee, there's a little switch there. So you can go forwards, backwards, up and down with it to find and create that perfect position for you. And once you've got your steering wheel set up, you've got your side view mirrors set up and even your seat, there's a series of different modes along the side there. So you can select one of the three unique profiles to set it up for you, which is amazing. Stick on the left-hand side is gonna be for your high beams. One thing about the high beams, can you see, yeah, you can see it there. So they're not permanently locking out. And the reason why is by your left knee, there's a little toggle switch to jump between different modes. So right now I'm in the auto mode. And what that means is that if the vehicle recognizes that it needs the high beams on, it'll automatically turn them on. If there's a car oncoming, it's gonna dim them before bringing them right back up again. But if you wanted to permanently lock your high beams on, you're just gonna flip out of that mode. You're gonna then just push away in order to have your high beams lock on permanently if you want it to. And just back down again. That's very straightforward there. Stick along the right-hand side. It's gonna be for your wipers. So front wipers, adjust the speed. And then there's a button on the tip of the stick there in order to adjust your rear windshield wipers as well. They're gonna pull in towards you for the front wiper fluid and you're gonna push away in order to get the rear wiper fluid going. I love the look here now. One thing that you might notice is that there aren't really many highlighted buttons here. But one really, really neat thing is that this pad here, so it kind of does like a double function. So you could just drag your finger around in order to be able to move between different screens. Hold on, I gotta show you this. This is really neat. Okay, so we'll go more of like a bird's eye like point of view here. So this is really cool. All right. So you can move yourself around this way instead if you wanted to, and that's gonna move you between all of the available options there. So you turn the cruise control on if you want to, and then from there, you could adjust this way so you can kind of move it around this way if you want. Resume, back out, and then you've got different button options there. So I love the new look and layout, so you can kind of drag your finger around there if you want to, or just push 
whatever buttons you want. So this is kind of neat because you can see what you're highlighting as you go. But the buttons there are not, obviously not all showing because we've got different systems. So I'm going to zoom you in there. It works the same way for this side too. So this side is going to be for volume and tuning and uh, things like that. So we'll get to that one in just a second. So let's start off with a pad on this side. So let's get you in there a little bit tighter. And here we go. So starting off, you've got your adaptive cruise control system. So the adaptive cruise is the set it and forget it cruise. So you can move it to the side there and now push in order to adjust if you're going to be closer or farther away from the vehicle in front of you. So it's how close or far away do you want to be? Really neat. You can also cancel out of that if you want to. Once you get up to speed, you can then set and then you can either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. And that's by going up and down this way instead. You can then just toggle off if you'd like to. And then there's the lane keeping system, which works the same three ways as it did last year. So first way is that if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's either going to nudge the steering wheel, it's going to shake the steering wheel, or it's going to do a mixture of both, just depending on how you have it set up through the infotainment system. But that's the basics of this pad. Like there's not really too much to it. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to for people, but I mean, the look there is really good. And you can see which systems are turned on, turned off, because you've got a little notification along the very top there. And then the pad on this side, this is going to be for your volume and then a few other things. So you could change between songs and stations this way if you were listening to AM, FM, Sirius XM. So let's actually go through and let's go to AM right now. So if you wanted to, you could change between all of your individual presets if you had any set up. You can also do a press and hold there in order to be able to seek to different stations. So actually to show you that one, so you're doing just a press and hold there and you can see that seeking you between different stations. And then you can also increase, decrease the volume that way as well. From there, there's a voice command prompt, and that's going to let you do things like change songs, radio stations. You can navigate using your voice. You can, as you saw earlier, turn on your heated steering wheel and so many other things using your voice now. It's really, really neat. But moving back into the cluster screen, some other highlights to point out. So along the very top, you've got your current fuel level in a few different ways. So how many kilometers or miles till empty, what your current fuel level is, if the auto start stop system is toggled on or off, and that's just done in the center stack, and then if the driver's got their, uh, their seatbelt put on or not. From there, I did mention you've also got your lane keeping system, lane follow assist system, your digital speed there, and then you've also got your speed sign recognition. So if they had a posted speed limit, that would show up there as well. Kind of revving it a little bit, but there isn't a standard tachometer inside of this thing. So it's just going to be that digital speedometer. So this cluster screen here is going to be locked in place. So there's no adjusting that whatsoever. Shifting up to this one though, it's a dynamic map instead. So the map there is going to depend on if you're just using the factory maps, which the factory maps now are actually going to be Google Maps, which is amazing. So you could use the maps this way if you'd like to. So it's kind of showing up in both areas, which is neat. You can search for addresses, previous destinations, and things like that. So let's say if we go to, actually, look at Yorkdale Ford. So you can see there it shows up on both screens. But it is really neat. Now one thing is that this screen is also dynamic in the sense that if you're not hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay running maps that way, it'll just run through Google Maps, which are set up through the car now. Because this is the new Google Android OS, which, I mean, it is a beautiful system. You'll find a full walkthrough down in the description, though. But through this, if you've got Android Auto or Apple CarPlay hooked up, you could then use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze through your phone, and it'll show up right on this screen. As you can see along the side there, it's kind of faded out along the side, but when you're hooked up through your phone, it's going to be a tight box instead. <laughs> tight box, that's what she said. And then from there, you've got your basic map set up. But I mean, that's straightforward. You can cancel out of the route there, and then you've just got your full map. But I love the way that looks. You've got your gear selector, so your park reverse neutral drive, your current engine temperature, the outside temperature, what direction you're facing, and then your current. Yeah, that's so cool. I just love it. It's, it's like one big thing is that this thing doesn't have a head-up display, but you don't need a head-up display because this is your head-up display instead. But where is a squirrel? So you've got your current, uh, current odometer off to the side there. So how many kilometers or miles have you currently traveled? Which is really neat. But one other unique thing is that as you shift out, into reverse, rather than it coming up through the infotainment system, it is fully heads up so you can see what's going on around you. And then from there, you've got your full 360 view along the side that we're looking at. 
you could do the same as always. So you've got your backup view, your backup split 180 view there as well, back to 360. And that works the same if you just go into your 360 camera. So you've got that front facing view, you can go full front or that split view instead. But I prefer just sticking into that 360 view. And then you can zoom in to individual spots there too if you wanted. Really neat. Back up. And then as you saw there, certain things are kind of shown and hidden as you go. So there are parts of this kind of this 48 inch screen that are fully customizable. So this part of the screen is customized through the infotainment system. There's a little button along the very bottom there. So you're going to push that and that essentially widgetizes the three individual areas. And then from there, you can select each one. So you can have three individual settings there, but it's which one do you prefer? Like, do you want to have your trip counter there instead of tire pressure? You can just overwrite it that way. You want to have your clock there instead of audio? You can do that. Same idea. If you wanted to just kind of do a drag and drop again, and then once you're happy with whatever setup you've got, you push off in order to be able to lock yourself into whatever thing you've set up there. You can also go into a calming screen instead. Oh, that is so nice. Look at that. I've got the driver's seat set up for myself being six feet tall so that I would traditionally drive. But with the seat as far down as it's going to go up overhead, I've got what, like four and a half plus inches of head space. So there's a ton of space available here. And the seat is super comfortable, super comfortable. I love it. And honestly, like having the massage chair seat capability is great. So I mentioned there, so there's a button along the side that you can push this one there, and that's going to pull up massage chair seat capability. It is actually pretty wild. The amount of options that you've got inside of this thing, but this is the 24 way perfect position seat. So if you were just in the base seat, you're not going to have quite as many, like nowhere near as many options, but the seat still is fairly comfortable at the same time. This package is the 203A package. So it's the highest available trim level for the reserve. That's why we've got the massage chair seats and then the upgraded Revel audio system, which I'll let you listen to in just a bit. But initial impressions of the comfort of the seat, it's definitely there. This feels really, really nice. And hold on the headrest, oh yeah four-way adjustable headrest as well. So up, down, forwards, backwards too, to create that perfect position for you. Taking a peek at the new 11.1 inch infotainment system inside of the Lincoln Nautilus. So this is the only option that's going to be available inside of this vehicle. And then you've got the larger 48 inch screen, which looks beautiful, but I'm going to show you everything that you need to know here. So this is going to be the home screen that you're typically met with when you first launch the vehicle. If that's not the screen you're on, you can just push the home icon there. You've got your clock along the top left hand side, your basic home screen here. There's no swipe capabilities at all here. And then there's no option of being able to adjust out these options. So this essentially is stuck into place the way that it is, but you saw there you've got profiles. So you can create unique profiles for people that are going to remember things like your presets, the phones that you've got set up, your navigation addresses and a number of other things, but you could also just sign into your Google account in order to use it. So this is not Sync 4. This is a completely new operating system that's built off of Google OS instead. So Google Android OS. But one nice thing is that even though it's built off of Google Android OS, you've still got Apple CarPlay capabilities and then um, Android Auto capabilities as well. But I'll talk you through those ones as we get through different options. But you've got your Google Maps on the main screen here. You can easily search for addresses, look at categories or saved addresses, select any options that you want there. You can exit out. You could push this in order to look at route options. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, and ferries, things like that, privacy options, etc., You can also push this to see different options that are available to get you back to your end destination. Pushing this button allows you to look at avoiding toll roads and things like that. You can also search for other at things. So let's say if you wanted to stop by a gas station first, let's click. And then you've got the option of adding in. So let's do it. So you've got different things to get and oh, oh, that's kind of cool. So I selected that second, but it pushed it as the next stop because obviously just logically that would make the most sense. I like that it did that automatically. And then from there, if you wanted to just exit out, you can remove the stop or you can just completely exit the navigation that you've set up. You've got your voice command prompt there. So you could do that. There's a button you can push on the steering wheel to launch it, or you can say, Hey Google, in order to launch the assistant that way instead. And the assistant here can do a boatload of things like, Hey Google, turn on the heated steering wheel. 
Got it. Turning on the steering wheel heater. So it turned it on automatically for you. So that is a really cool thing. You can do things like turn on the heated steering wheel. You can use factory navigation and so, so many other things. It is incredible. But that's the basics of your maps. Like it's regular Google Maps like you'd find on your phone. But the downside though is that this system, it technically does require an active data connection in order to be able to use. So as of right now, you get your first year of services for free. Lincoln still hasn't announced what the cost is going to be. There will be a cost, it's just not updated as of yet. So once Lincoln announces if it's gonna be a monthly or a yearly service, I'll link that down in the description with an update on what it's looking like. But I mean, I love that you've got it. And like, if you don't wanna to subscribe to a service, you still could hook up your phone. Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze through Google devices, or in, uh, Android Auto lets you use Google Maps or Waze. But that's the basics there. Super straightforward using Google Maps in order to find addresses and things like that. As I mentioned, you can also use the voice command prompt if you wanted to go that route instead. This is a little notification icon. So do you have different things that are available? Oh, a little swipe up as well. So swipe away action. And then you can push this in order to get back to the screen as well, or as you saw there, you can just swipe up to get rid of, I love that animation. Different connectivity options that are available there as well. And then you've got your climate control settings that are baked right into the screen. So climate control is baked into the screen. There are no tactile physical buttons down the center stack, but you can do things like adjust the heated ventilated seats using your voice instead. So it does take a little bit of time, or you can just adjust it this way. Then there's a basic slider that you can use there as well. Link the driver and the passenger side to one another if you wanted to. Same idea, turn on the heated ventilated first row seats, three different option levels for each one. Nice. You can adjust your fan speed that way. You can swipe up to adjust your fan speed that way as well. You can go into an auto mode if you want the vehicle to determine which mode you should be in. Three individual levels, and that's going to be the intensity of the mode itself. You can push this in order to get to this level instead. Let's actually turn that off for now. I'm going to swipe up and drop down. That's kind of neat. I love that you can do that in like so many different ways as well. But you've got the power button to just turn your climate control off completely. Do you want it going to your windshield face feet, some sort of combination? If the driver's side is different than the passenger, you could automatically link it as well. So it's gonna default the passenger side to whatever the driver's side set up for. This little guy, you can have it going on body, off body, for motion there as well. Oh, that's really cool. So it's gonna literally follow around. That's really cool. Okay, I did not know it could do that. So you could have it come and push out of the vent in unique areas for each individual area that is really cool so unlike using oh i guess that would kind of make sense because there's no physical dials for you to be able to move the actual vents on either of these things so you'd be able to select each individual vent and see where you want the air to go that is really cool motion off your body so if you wanted to okay that makes more sense so it's going to push in and that's going to be the same passenger side as well do you want it going off body? Do you want to have it motion so you can control where each stream is going individually? That is really cool. Or you can close it so that that vent is not open, but I love that. That is so, so neat. And then lock it into place wherever you want to there. I love that. From there, you've got your air circulation, yay nay, max AC, and then you've got the cabin air refresh as well. So whether or not you need to refresh the cabin just to get rid of particulates and other issues and things like that. I love, honestly, this is such a cool feature. That in and of itself, I love that. Ooh, auto mode, ah, auto mode chaos. Turn that off for now. You've got your max windshield defroster, rear window defroster, air conditioning, and then your passenger side seats there too. It's really straightforward to use this. I love it. That is really cool. Honestly, like even this part where you can kind of move up and down this way, I think that is a really neat feature, but that's using the, that's the basics of using the climate control system. Next up, you've got this section, series of other options. So drive modes, you can actually get to, there's a button down the center stack to push, or you can get at it through this mode instead, but you've got your normal. It's conserve, excite, slippery, deep conditions, etc. So these things are gonna play with things like traction stability control. It's going to also rev up your RPMs a little bit more in that excite mode. So it gives you a sportier performance in comparison. And then swiping across there, you've got some additional settings and the additional is reset to default order. Because one really cool thing is let's say if you're a bigger fan of using the excite mode more than anything, you can have that as priority there instead. So you can kind of do a press and hold in order to be able to adjust these things out. 
customize it a little bit more, make it a little bit more you. You've got ambient lighting, so you can adjust the brightness of the ambient light, and it's in a few different spots. So you're looking primarily in the cup holders there. There's also down by your feet and a few other spots throughout the vehicle. So you can kind of see where it's highlighted there. And then which color do you want that lighting to be? Really neat. Auto hold settings, that's the one if you come down to a complete stop, take your foot off the brake, car's not gonna move. Do you want to traction, toggle your traction control system on or off? Turning it off, the only time you're really gonna do that is in really slippery conditions. Digital scent. So there are technically three different scents that are available right now. Chances are good that I'm gonna upload a or create a bunch of additional scents, but it says no cartridge detected because there isn't a cartridge installed. But that's actually done right through the armrest. So you can create, well, you can insert a few different unique scents, which is pretty neat. So if somebody's smelly in the car, you can use that instead if you want to. This thing has the capability now as well. Well, I guess you had that last year too. You can adjust the seat and really make it your own a little bit more. So you can adjust out each individual section of the seat to really make it your own. And you've got massage, driver, and passenger seats too. And there are a few different options that are available there. One cool thing is that you could go through the screen this way to do it. There's a button just to the left-hand side of the driver's seat, right-hand side of the passenger seat as well, in order to toggle the seats on or off, and then even go between the different modes and the different intensity levels of each mode too. It is really, really cool. And then you saw there, it's the same for the driver and for the passenger side. So you could select and adjust the passenger side seat there, but that is also going to be based off of how you have the vehicle configured. So as of right now, this thing has the 24-way perfect position seats. You wouldn't have the massage chair seats if you didn't have that feature. Valet mode is still there. So valet mode essentially locks the screen out. So you enter, no, actually, we gotta go through this. Enter in a nice difficult pin. And then that should, locks everything out. It even turns the audio off too. That is really neat. And then, okay, so climate still works though. Okay, but everything else you can't use until you re-enter that four digit number and it locks everything out. So it works the same way as it did last year. From here, you've got vehicle status. You can check to see what's going on with tire pressure, oil life, so we're still solid there. Digital scent we've seen, valet mode, and then some additional settings. And there are so many settings. So things like your sound settings, tone. You can adjust your treble, mid-range, and bass. Bass usually sounds, in my opinion, cranked a little bit higher, treble down a little bit. Tends to give really good audio. It's a matter of preference, but I mean, I'll do an audio test in a bit, but it is really, really good. Balance and fade, you want to focus on just the driver, people in the back seat, all around, or reset it back to center. Speed compensated volume, so as you're going faster or slower, it's automatically going to either raise or lower the speed as necessary. Volume, yes, I love that they've added this in. So you can adjust Lunch. the audio that way for each individual thing. So do you want to have your phone volume higher, lower, your prompts, your call ring? How high do you want these individual settings now? I love that they've added this in for each individual option. Ringtones, when you've got an incoming phone call, what do you want it to sound like? And then notification sounds. You've got some different options there as you get notifications. Really cool. Love it. All right, and from there, we've got some Bluetooth settings. So as you can see there, we've got a phone connected. You can add in additional devices, which I mean, at this point, let's do it. So next up is going to be setting up Apple, car, uh, Apple devices and Android devices in the vehicle. So let's start off by adding in a device. On your phone, you're gonna to go to Bluetooth and then you're just waiting for the device to show up. It should say Lincoln Nautilus, iPhone 14 Pro, that's me, I think. There we go, pins match up. Okay, that's interesting. So it didn't, oh, so it's showing hands-free there. So it didn't initially show, but when I connected to my device there, it's going to launch up. And yes, these are right, so we're gonna pair. Allow contacts and favorites to sync. I'm gonna say no to that one, but I'm connected. So you can see there, there are two different devices. Do you want to allow things? Let's see, use contact names to improve. I'm going to change settings. And on that one, I'm gonna say no to that one. And that's just because this isn't my vehicle, but otherwise you could. And then you can see there, I'm hooked up through Bluetooth. I can use Bluetooth for audio if I want to, for phone calls. So that's one nice thing is that if you've got multiple phones connected, it's who gets connection priority, but what do you want to have connected? 
Do you want to have your phone connected, audio connected on this phone? You can push this little thing in order to be able to disconnect, forget. You can look at phone calls, media, text messages, contact downloads, whether or not you want that to happen, and so many other things. You can disable anything, enable whatever you'd like to there as well. Moving back, you can click back through in order to reconnect, and then you can also use CarPlay. So do you want to use CarPlay with the Nautilus? Yes, I want to use it. Do you want to start it? Yes, let's start it. And we are connected there. That is amazing. And as you can see, fully connected to CarPlay, and it doesn't look like there are going to be any limitations there. It's fairly responsive, which is great. You've got your main screen there. So you could, actually, can you get fuller screen? Yes, complete full screen on this now. It's not obviously like it's not much of a difference, but that is really cool that you can kind of stretch it across that last teeny little bit if you wanted to. But on the outside, you've got your current time, connection levels, which map was open last, which audio application was opened, and then which miscellaneous application was last opened. Moving here, you've got Apple Maps. Nice and responsive, no pinch to zoom. You've got to go in and out this way. You could also select this to move around if you wanted to. You could change up your heading that way if you want, search for destinations, etc. From there, you've also got Google Maps, and I think Google Maps will be the same thing. Yes, nice and responsive, no pinch to zoom capabilities. You can go this way in order to zoom in or out. Back to done. Search for addresses that way as well. You can go back home, swipe across, and I think Waze is going to be the same way. So still nice and responsive, which is great. Pushing there in order to zoom in or out. Hit done. You can let people know of police that are there, crash, traffic hazards, whatever the case may be. So Waze users are going to be familiar with that. But it's great. And like I said, so many different audio options that are available. So if you wanted to listen to podcasts, you could, music, audiobooks, live ones or radio app. There are so many things that you can listen to through Apple CarPlay. And then one really neat thing is let's say if you've got Waze set up, actually, let's go. Actually, yeah, I want to use a different, I'm even going to use Apple Maps on this one. And then let's search for an address. Let's actually look for a gas station and let's just randomly grab one and go. Starting route to Petro Canada. So once you actually open up Apple Maps inside of CarPlay, not only does it show there, but it also takes out the system default screen there as well. So I'm essentially running my Apple Maps with a nice fade out effect right through that 48 inch screen along the top there too. That's really cool. And then you can proceed to the route, push up there and route. And then it's shot back out to Google Maps along the top there instead. So that's really cool. So what this means is that if you've got a map open and running inside of Apple CarPlay, it's probably going to be the same for Android Auto. It's going to overtake the system default map there on top of that. That's amazing. And then back home. That's great. And then you're going to have the same capabilities as you would in all Apple devices. So on your Apple phone, if you go into your general settings, go to CarPlay, find the Nautilus. You can forget it. Toggle CarPlay off while the phone's locked or go to customize. So let's say if you're a bigger fan of listening to your podcasts and you also want ways to be there as well, you can do that and then you can delete certain things. Fully removes them from the screen, but they're saved. So you could add them back in if you want to. And then if you're not a fan of any changes you've made along the top of your phone there, you can do a reset in order to reset back to the factory default screen there instead. Very straightforward. Pushing home gets you back there or you can go back to this icon view, and like I said, swiping across that way does the same thing. Pushing the Apple button there does nothing unless you're out of it, and then you can push back in to launch right back into CarPlay again. Looking back at your basic settings there, if you hop into your phone, you're back into CarPlay again. So let's go through settings, we've got Bluetooth, and then you've got the phones that are connected. So I've got this one that's connected to CarPlay. So you can either be connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but you can have a mix of these options there as well. So if you wanted to be able to use your phone, if you wanted to be able to use it for audio as well, which is great. Oh, I know that's quite a little bit of info, but that's how you set up Apple devices inside of the new Nautilus. Okay, and setting up an Android is gonna be the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, all you're gonna to have to do is get into your settings. You can get to this for a few different ways, but you wanna launch your Bluetooth settings there. You can forget devices, but what we're looking for is adding in a device. 
on your phone, you're looking for Bluetooth and we're just waiting to pair. So it recognizes it. So we're going to click through and add. Couldn't pair. Get out of here. There we go. All right. So it's interesting. So I touched on the, the phone first and then I went this way. So it looks like you're going to have to make sure you just pair right through the Nautilus screen there first instead. But the pins match up. So OK and pair. And there we go. Allow access to contacts, messages. I'm going to say no because this isn't my ride. But you've also got wireless Android Auto. So you can simply start Android Auto there. But so having said that, this screen technically is built in Android Auto anyways. I'll show you some really cool features in a second, but you could run through Android if you wanted to go this way instead, but I mean, that is straightforward. You can push the button there in order to go into this screen, launch into Google Maps, and there we go. But I love it. Nice and responsive, pinch to zoom capabilities, which is great. It's nice. You can pop along the top there in order to be able to look at route options. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, use fuel efficient routes and things like that, change up your heading plus or minus this way instead. So there's searching for addresses is straightforward. You can push this little icon in order to get to this little split screen there. And then if you wanted to go full screen either or, so you can go full screen maps back home to this little screen. And then you can also jump between a few different options there too. You could push there if you wanted to activate your Google Assistant as well. But I mean, it's super straightforward. Along the side, you've also got a microphone as well. So Android Auto recently used. So that's just a notification tray along the side there. And then you've got a series of different apps that are available. Now, on the Android side of things, if Waze is not showing in your Android device, you could easily set it up. I've put together a video explaining how to add Waze onto any device, essentially. But you can find that walkthrough video down in the description of this video. But very similar to the Google side of things, you do have the flexibility of customizing some things. So go Android Auto here, and then you could look at previously connected cars. You can customize the launcher, use things wirelessly, whatever the case may be. But the one that we're looking for is the ability to customize the launcher. So let's say if you're a bigger fan of, I don't know, I don't, maybe you want Waze moved up, order of importance, closer to the top, and you want to have your podcast as number one. So you could just ah, do a grab and push, in order to adjust it, but it's not dynamic like it was on the Apple side. You actually have to disconnect from Android Auto on the screen, relaunch for any changes that take into effect there. So, I mean, really all you're gonna do, hop home, we're going actually going back into, oh, it didn't even launch it that way. That's unfortunate. So it looks like we've got to fully disconnect. So we're gonna go settings, Bluetooth, and we're connected to the Galaxy. So let's disconnect from the Galaxy for a second. We're gonna reconnect to Android Auto. And it's launched back in and has it taken? Yeah, so it made the changes that we requested there as well. So you actually have to physically shut down Android Auto and relaunch for any changes you make there and to take in order for them to take effect. But I mean, it was straightforward there as you saw in order to get to it. So we go back to our settings, Bluetooth, and we've got both phones that have been connected. So it is straightforward there, but I mean, looking here, you see some things that are grayed out and that's because you're currently connected to Android Auto. So if you wanted to, you could then just go and reconnect. And if you see there, so you've got one, so this phone's connected over Bluetooth specifically for audio. You could also have another phone set up for phone calls. So it's essentially going to be one or the other. So you can kind of do like a mix and match there if you want to, but it's either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So you can't do like phone calls for one and then Android Auto on the other, but you can kind of do a mix and match this way instead. And then if you wanted to be able to delete devices, you just connect through, pushing there. You can either disconnect or forget it. So let's forget, yes, and same idea. Let's take this one. We're gonna push through, forget, yes. And it's removed both phones from the vehicle. So it's that easy setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the new screen in the Nautilus. Okay, and that's the basics of Bluetooth. Moving into driver assistant settings, there are a ton of options here. So you've got adaptive cruise control in this thing, but if you don't like adaptive, you can switch it out to just a normal cruise control instead. And then adaptive cruise, you've got your lane centering system. So the lane centering is a good one because that what that's going to do is it's going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go with hands-free. So this thing now has the flexibility of using Lincoln's Blue Cruise system. So on certain highways in Canada and then all throughout the state, so different interstates, et cetera, you're gonna be completely hands-free driving. But if you want to walk through on how that actually works, you'll find it down in the, down in the description of this video. 
in-lane repositioning means that if there's a vehicle coming to the side either way, if there's space, it's automatically going to move you along the side in order for that larger vehicle to be able to pass. Lane change assist, if you wanted to change lanes, all you're gonna do is use your turn stick and then you're gonna go either left or right. The vehicle's gonna check on either side and if it's safe, it's automatically going to change the lanes for you. And then for different prompts, so if it's gonna turn on blue cruise, it's gonna let you know, do you want the prompt, yay or nay? And then predictive speed assist, do you want that one with an, a with a little limiter there? So with the speed assist, what that means is that let's say if the if you've got adaptive cruise set up and the speed is going from 80 down to 60, it's automatically going to decrease your speed. But that's also dependent on whether or not you have a tolerance level set up. So what that means is that if you go from let's say 80 to 60, but you have a plus 10, you're only going to drop down by 10 kilometers an hour or 10 miles per hour instead. So that one's going to be a matter of preference. I at least enjoy using the adaptive cruise control system. But as always, it comes down to a matter of preference. Series of different vehicle settings. So do you want to be able to idle for 30 minutes max, yay or nay? Rear occupant alert. So when you go to, to turn the vehicle off, you get out of the vehicle, it's going to either do nothing or tell you to check the back to make sure that there's nobody there or it's going to sound the horn on you just to make sure that you didn't forget a little one in the back seat. Actually, I'm going to turn that back off again So I'm not a fan. Lighting, you've got options, so auto high beams. What that means is that if the vehicle recognizes the high beams are needed, it's automatically gonna turn them on. If somebody's oncoming, it's going to dim them before turning them back on again automatically. Lamp delay, when you go to lock the vehicle using the fob, do the lamps just turn off automatically? Do they stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds instead? I think that was it there. Oh, no, so many other options, so many other things. Easy entry exit for seat adjustment. So when you go to turn the vehicle off, the driver's seat's gonna lower and then back up for you to get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. And then approach detection, same idea. So as you approach the vehicle, it's automatically gonna pull that seat back for you as well. Key detection alert. So as you go to leave the vehicle or if you leave with, a, if, if the key fob's away from the vehicle, it's gonna let you know. Alarm system, do you wanna ask on exit or do you automatically want the motion sensors to come on? I'm gonna say yes to that one just because it's a good safety setting remote start setup. Do you want that enabled? Yes or no. And then with remote start, what happens? Does the vehicle determine what the climate control is going or what the climate settings are going to be? And then it's the same thing with the seats and steering wheel. Do you want the vehicle to determine if the heated ventilated seats need to be turned on or not? Yay or nay? And then how long do you want that start to last? So 5, 10 or 15 minutes? Oh, that's definitely not it there. So you can use the key fob in order to remote open and close the windows. So let's hop outside and I'll show you how that process works. So you're gonna press the unlock button twice, and then on the second button press, you're gonna hold. So you're gonna go one, two, and hold. Then you can press the lock button in order to pause it partway if you wanted to. And then to continue the cycle, you just press the unlock button again twice. Second button press, you're gonna hold. Rolling the windows down, and once it starts going up or down, you can then release. And that's the window down, and it's all four windows. And then in order to roll them back up again, you press the lock button twice, and then on the second button press, you're gonna hold. So you're gonna go one, two, and hold. Same idea, so you can release, you can press the unlock button to pause it part way, or press the lock button again twice in order to continue the process. So that is really straightforward. I love how simple it is. Moving back from there, you've also got power lift gate, and there are a few different options. So you can do just manual if you want to, or power, with hands-free. So hands-free means that you're just doing a kick underneath the back in order for the lift gate to be able to lift up or close automatically. Very useful feature. Options for locks, nothing exciting there except maybe for this one. When you go to lock the vehicle, or unlock I should say, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? And then key free. So you do have the option of using phone as a key inside of this thing. It's all set up through the Lincoln Way app. But if you want to walk through on the Lincoln Way app specifically, you'll find that down in the description of this video as well. And I don't even, oh, went back, whoa, whoa, one too many times. All right, from there, that is almost the basics. So we've got locks and then mirrors. Mirrors, do you want the auto fold to come in? So when you go to lock the vehicle, do the mirrors automatically fold in, yay or nay? Door keypad code, so there's a five digit factory code that comes with the vehicle. And then you can also enter in your own unique ones there. The big benefit to these codes is that if you don't have the fob on you, you wanna get inside or using phone as the key, whatever the case may be, and let's say your phone's died, you'd be able to use the backup start password and the keypad code to get in and then start the vehicle up.
And then if you're changing oil yourself, oil life reset means that it'll just reset back to 100% if you're changing oil yourself instead. And that is everything under vehicle settings. Next up, some basics for system, language, and input. How many? Oh, wow. Look at all the languages here. So it used to be just English, Spanish, or French. Now you've got so many other options instead. I love that. Google fill services, yay, nay. Text, text to speed output, whether or not that happens. Actually, let's do it so it's a little bit quicker. That's really cool. Temperature, you've got Fahrenheit or Celsius. How do you want to measure things? So do you want to be miles per gallon, liters, etc.? Tire pressure unit, do you want to be PSI, KPA, bar? Do you want to show your speed in miles or kilometers per hour? And then one nice thing about showing your speed in miles or kilometers per hour is that it also adjusts what's going on inside of the cluster screen too. It's going to automatically do like a little split screen for you instead. So it's going to show you both kilometers and miles per hour. Obviously, because I'm in Canada, it's giving preference to kilometers per hour. All right, time, you can update that as well. So automatic time zone update typically makes the most sense unless you live close to a time zone, in which case I'd suggest disabling that. And then do you prefer to use military time or that traditional 12 hour time instead? Same idea, matter of preference, storage information. So this, eh, that's actually a pretty solid amount of space. Nice. All right, so 60-ish, about 70 gigs of overall data that's available inside of this thing. Kind of neat. So if you wanted to be able to store things like movies, music, and all sorts of other things, that's right. You heard it right. Movies, which I'll show you in a second. Other basic information about the infotainment system. So you can see your basic information here. You can reset a few different things as well. You can reset individual elements. So you don't want to reset your hotspot. Phone is a key reset. And so or just do like a full factory reset there instead. So this one is going to be using your vehicle as a wireless hotspot. Phone as a key means that if your phone is set up this way, you can delete other people off of using their phone as a key. And then same idea, you can do connectivity reset if Bluetooth and other things are giving you issues or perform a full factory reset there instead. Submit feedback and then you've got Android Auto. So it tells you what the current build is for the device that we're using right now. Profiles, there are a series of different options that are available. You can add in additional accounts. You can set up your profile name. You can change it your profile avatar. So if you wanted something a little, oh yeah, Phoenix. Oh, there we go. Phoenix person. You've got different ID methods. Ooh, you can link your key fob and then you can link your phone right to your individual profile. How do you want your security set up for your individual profile there as well? And then you can add in more or you can fully delete the profile on top of that. So there are a ton, so many different settings that are available here. Display, you could also adjust the touchscreen brightness as well through this. Change out the theme. Finally, we've got a ton of different options that are available there. And there, oh, it's changing theme. I was like, why is it not changing? Takes a second to do. And then it changes up some very small, subtle details inside of that 48 inch screen as well as the infotainment is gonna be probably on the home screen there where it'll change up a few basics. But that's kind of neat that you can really customize the larger 48 inch screen instead. Actually, I think there was one or two other, oh. One or two other options there. So if we go back to display, there we go. You've also got a calming screen instead. So if you prefer that calming screen with just basic date and time information, button press. Hello. There we go. So we've got to go back through in order to get back to settings again. Okay, that I think should just be a touch, but here nor there. And then touch screen beep. There we go. I was wondering where that beep was. So whether or not the beep happens, yay or nay, is going to be a matter of preference. I know that does tend to drive some people nuts, but if the beep, if that drives you crazy, you could turn it off. Network and information, vehicle connectivity, yay or nay, Wi-Fi, do you want to connect to a Wi-Fi network if available? 911 assist. So with your phone connected, what I would recommend is making sure that 911 assist is turned on. And the reason why is because if your phone is connected and you're in an, a serious collision, it's automatically going to die on 911 for you. But you do need to have your phone connected for that to be able to work. And there you've got your assistant and your voice as well. Nothing exciting there. Location data. Ooh, I mean, the screen has Google Maps built in. So in order to use it, you'd need to have that enabled. Do you want to share the information with Lincoln? Yay or nay? That one's going to be a matter of preference, but certain things won't work if you don't have these things enabled. 
notifications. Are there any notifications available for all of your different applications that are available through this screen? Privacy information. Do you want to share certain things like control microphone? So this essentially is an Android device. That is really cool. So you've got full control over security, privacy information, and things like that. So if you've never used an Android device, this essentially is going to let you do a ton of things. So app permissions, if you didn't want certain apps or to be able to access different things, you'd be able to essentially lock all of these things out. Security information, yes or no. Do you want to remove security credentials? This is a full Android device. That is really cool. Caption preferences, so oh, that is really nice. So defaults, you can have your text size to show up larger if you wanted to. Default size and very large for different aspects of the screen as well. About time, there's accessibility. And then you've got some basics for your apps. So which apps were opened up last? Permission manager, so who's gonna be able to look at what for your data, which we saw earlier? Are there apps that are unused? And then you've got basic Google information. So, ad, oh no, ads, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I wonder if that means that eventually you're gonna have ads playing on this thing. I'm like, fingers crossed, hopefully not, but it is a little troubling that there's an ads area there. Hmm. You've got passenger inf uh, password information and then you can send feedback to Google as well. You can also open and close the lift gate down along the very bottom there. And then next up is going to be our little app screen. And for your individual profile, you've got a ton of different options. So you've got your maps, Play Store, which is kind of cool. Oh, you've got to sign in, that makes sense. But you'd be able to do things like figure out, oh, you'd be able to do things with the Play Store, like download additional apps, because there are a ton of apps available here. You've got your Google Assistant as well. You can launch into your phone doing a quick connect that way. You can launch into AM, FM, Sirius XM, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, it is nice. And there are currently no presets that are saved right now. So if you wanted to add a preset, we're just going to add it in. So it's that simple to be able to do it. So I wonder, 94.9 FM. All right, here's 94.9 FM. So it tuned to that station as well. Of course, can't get it because of how far away I am from the station, but it's nice. And then if you wanted to, just save an additional preset there. I wonder if I could, can you delete it? Now, so it doesn't look like you can actually delete the presets once they're set there, but you can easily switch in between your different presets. And it's nice because it puts them in order. And then I wonder, so I'm on FM, if I go to Sirius XM now, cool, that's really nice. Okay, so with that available, like when you go to different stations, you can see there, so it's no longer a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, it's just going to be a series of individual presets there instead. That's good. You can hold the set if you wanted to set up a unique preset there, start the song over. You can jump between or get notifications. So when the song or the artist comes on, it can let you know. Look at related songs, that's really neat. Profile along the very top, so you can look at your listener settings, basic system information, so third-party licenses. That's really neat. From there, you've got all sorts of options like listener settings, system information, legal information, so nothing overly exciting there, but this is the one I was looking for. So you can block explicit content, tune to start where the vehicle starts up, reset all of your listening history and things like that. Straightforward, and then you've got some settings along the very top, which jumps us back into the audio settings that we had been looking at earlier. All right, and I think that's gonna be the basics. So you've got Bluetooth audio available, podcasts, Alexa, AM, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So there are a ton of different audio sources that are available inside of this thing. You can tune to stations this way if you prefer to go that route. You could go this way in order to seek. You could push the button on the steering wheel in order to adjust stations that way and kind of seek in between. Jumping this way, it will jump you to the next available station too. So it's essentially your seek buttons that are available there. Really straightforward. And then as you saw earlier, to save it, you just do a plus. Oh, and it doesn't look like it actually does save them in order. Oh, but you can drag and drop. Oh, that's really cool. All right, did not know that was the case. So it looks like if you wanted to readjust your presets, all you're doing is just a quick little drag and drop in order to adjust it to customize it all your own. And that's obviously going to be the case for Sirius XM here as well. Oh, no, that just saved the station. And I'm just like rewriting the same station over so many times. Oh, sorry, John. 
This is a demo vehicle. <laughs> Just reset some of his stations. All right, so it doesn't look like it's the case across the board, but still it's pretty nice that this is available. But that's the basics of audio. So the only other thing is going to be an audio test, which I can't show you just yet because there's one other really cool thing that's at the bottom of this screen. You've got Bluetooth audio. If you had Bluetooth set up, obviously I don't have a phone connected, so that's not going to work. Basic message information, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which I don't have a phone currently connected to that. Alexa is available inside of this thing. Using your vehicle as a wireless hotspot, there's a fully digital owner's manual like usual. So if you wanted to be able to search for different things. So let's say if you didn't know when, oh, I don't know, maybe when you have to do your oil changes. Or actually, let's type in octane. So if you're not sure what type of gas that you should be using, it's 87 as the minimum. But you could see exactly the engine specs that you're looking for. What's the high voltage battery, selecting the correct fuel level and things like that. And just swipe across. So it's literally your full digital owner's manual is here. So if this didn't help out, this owner's manual is going to let you know everything else that you need to know about the vehicle. Nice. You can perform software updates, look at additional settings, which we've already seen. You can play games inside of this thing too. So you have to download them from, from the Play Store and you can, even, you can even connect a controller to this thing too. Looking at a series of different files, like this thing is literally an Android device. So if you had images, videos, and things like that that you saved, you'd be able to play them all through the screen here instead. That is really cool. Really, really cool. And then from here, you've also got basic files, Sirius XM, podcasts. You've got Google News as well. And my most favorite, oh, you've got YouTube right through the screen here. So this thing does support full video playback and audio playback through YouTube directly. So, that is amazing. So you do, you literally have full video playback. So let's take a look here. I've got to obviously do this and see. So you've got all, oh yeah, there we go. So you could pull up YouTube channels directly here. And then if you wanted to, you'd be able to do things like, see what's going on here. Can we go full screen? Yeah, look at this. This thing, fully removable, and then it gives you a nice amount of storage space back there. So. Okay, that is really cool. So you can do full video playback, and I wonder if you can even adjust the quality if you wanted to from there. Okay, hold on. Okay, so it doesn't look like that's the case. Yeah, so you can't adjust the quality there, but you can have it autoplay, and then closed captions and things like that as well. That is really, really cool. Okay, I... I like not even secretly, I absolutely love that there is full YouTube video playback available here. So if you wanted to be able to watch different things, you'd have the flexibility to be able to do it. That is really cool. I love it. YouTube available on this thing now. I love it. But one thing, oh, I guess that, that I should point out too, is that it only works when the vehicle's parked because the second you go into drive, reverse, whatever the case may be, it's going to obviously turn it off from a safety perspective. But still, that is really cool that that's available. And then the only other thing to point out, so that's everything there, and you can fully adjust and customize these things too. So drag and drop capability to be able to customize it. Which location do you want to have all these things saved as? We can sort them alphabetically if you want to, reset to a default layout, and then manage which apps are showing up. <laughs> so, so many things. I love it. That is amazing. I did mention, so while this thing is kind of loading up, there are three different speaker choices that are available inside of the Nautilus. So you either got a 10 speaker in the Premier, a 14 speaker in the Reserve, and then a 28 speaker optional in the Reserve, and then in the black label. This is the 28 speaker. In this audio test, it's coming right out of the microphone, so there's no post-processing done whatsoever. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The audio inside of this thing is outrageous. Like I said, this is the upgraded 28 speaker, which is why it sounds so damn good. The 14 speaker still sounds good, but the 28 speaker is just a step above. So you've really got to figure out if the finer luxuries like that better audio system or the massage chair seats are going to be worth it because that 203A package is like 10 plus thousand dollars to get it. So that one's going to be a matter of preference, but I mean the audio quality, if you're an audiophile, 
And if you go on longer strips or if you're stuck in traffic, having the massage seats is beautiful. So you've got your piano key shifters that just look so, so nice. You've got your park reverse neutral drive and then a dedicated low gear there as well. And one neat thing about, like even when you're in something like reverse, it doesn't show up inside of the infotainment system the way that you would. The second that you put yourself into reverse, it actually shows you basic information inside of the infotainment system, but then it shoots the reverse camera up inside of the larger 48 inch screen instead. You've got your backup view, your uh, front, uh, sorry, your backup 180 view. And then if you're in park, you can also push the little 360 button there in order to show your 360 camera up along the top. And because you're in park or if you're in drive, you can go for that front view or the front 180 degree view there instead, which I mean, that just looks so good. The auto start stop button's there. So the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. Max windshield defroster, you've got your 360 camera button, four way blinkers. You've also got park assist. Using park assist inside of the new Lincoln Nautilus is a very straightforward process. I'm gonna show you how it works. So what you're gonna do, starting off, there's the little P tab there. So you're going to push that tab. And when you do, you've got parking assistance. And from there, it's saying drive forward for it to search for available spaces. So, and I wonder, is it gonna look? Okay, so it did, oh. It found that spot? No way. Okay, that's kind of cool. I did not think that was going to happen. So it's saying now remove hand from the steering wheel and you can see that in the 48 inch screen as well as the infotainment system. From there, you're just going to go into neutral and all you have to do, so you have to press and hold the P button and then that's pretty much it. So you're releasing the brake pedal, which freaks you out a little bit, but then you just press and hold the little P button there and it's going to reverse. Ooh, interesting. How are you gonna do this? That is impressive. Okay, that is really damn cool. It got, it got tight in there. It got really, really close, but it's doing it. That is really neat. I honestly did not know what to expect with this new system, but it just found the spot. I didn't have to go left or right. It just found it. It found a very challenging spot. and It's backing me in beautifully. Okay, that was really cool. Like that, hold on, I gotta show you the outside here. Like look at that parking job. That is a well, well done parking job. That is really cool, okay. Now the next one, I gotta see if this thing can also do parallel park. So we just did a, perpen uh, we just did a perpendicular park? Yeah, we just did a perpendicular park. So let's go and see if this thing will be able to figure out how to do a parallel park too. So in order to do that, Let's see, I probably have to go to the end here. I think that there was a parallel parking spot right there. There we go. All right, so there's a few different spots it might try to get me to do. So I'm gonna hold on, I'm just gonna skip ahead because I don't want that spot. Okay, so I'm gonna look for a, per a parallel parking spot, ideally. It's the same idea. I'm gonna hit the little P button, parking assistance, and the car is going to figure out where there's an available space. I want parallel park, ideally. <laughs> it's the same as usual. Neutral, hands off the steering wheel, foot off the brake, press and hold the little P button, and then the car is gonna do it all for me. So this is a parallel park that it's doing for me right now with a boatload of obstacles. There's a car to the right, there's a shipping container to the right, there's a tire right in behind me, and then a navigator in behind that. It has literally <laughs> avoided all of the obstacles there. And then pulling me nice and close. <laughs> it is such a smart system and when it's finished, it looks so good. And then this thing also has the parallel out capability as well. So all we're gonna do, same idea, P button, parking assistance, and automatically tells me that not only 
is it going to help me with park park out but i can't use the right side because there is a shipping container to the right so it's literally impossible for me to go that way so all i'm going to do off to the left that would be kind of nice if it was smart enough to know that because i can't go right to go left but button press there shift in into neutral foot off the brake hit the little p button and then from there it's just going to back me up in order to and then it should crank the steering wheel and that's essentially just that it can crank the wheel in order to get out there it goes done it says finish now because in theory all i should need to do press the drive button and then it's got me perfectly positioned to leave the space so it's an incredibly intelligent system especially when you look at the just the finding the parking space capabilities it is a night and day difference above last year's like the 2023 model i love it from there you've also got a very large slideable tray there wireless charge pads there oh actually i guess i didn't even show you this so you've got your media so you can turn the your audio on or off and then you can adjust your volume this way as well but the wireless charge pads there a few usb power points so usb c usb type a with some cup holders the armrest in this thing is non-lockable but you've got a good amount of storage space and mind this but you've got a few more power points there and then a 12 volt power point down there as well and then i did mention so you've got digital sense so if you wanted to you could install unique sense there as well just to make it smell a little bit nice but you've got this nice highlight that follows all the way through at the dash the glove box in this thing is non-lockable up overhead auto dimming rear view mirrors there and ooh, you've also got interior light controls and then you've also got your sunshade controls so one button press opens it up halfway secondary button press opens it up the rest of the way i mean just look at that that just opens it up beautifully and then from there you can either vent away if you want to so push away to create a little vent and then single button press opens this thing up pretty much the full way secondary button press is that last little bit but i mean that you get your little bug shield that's beautiful and then there's button press in order to close there's a sunglasses holder there from there you've also got your home link system so if you've got a garage door opener at home you can program it in i put together a little how to on how to actually use this you'll find that down in the description You've got a little receipt ticket holder on the outside and on the inside. And then the vanity mirror has lights built in with this thing stretching out to block all of the sun that might be hitting your face. But I mean, like I said, that is incredible. I think Lincoln did an incredible job on the new Nautilus. I really, really like this, but hold on, let's get the, yeah, there we go. So driver's seat set up the way that I would traditionally drive. And with it set up this way, with me being six feet tall, inside of the second row i've got a great amount of foot space great amount of knee space and up overhead with me sitting fully upright in inch and a half ish maybe two inches of head space but one nice thing about the nautilus is that it does also feature the option of reclining the seats a little bit not a big recline but like just a little bit but i mean that opens it up so if you're probably six four maybe six five you'll be able to sit inside of the seat no problem actually really nice and like the outboard seat this year that is really damn nice Ooh, it hugs the body really nicely i like that and then fitting three full-size versions of me in the vehicle so foot wise there's more than enough space it might be a little bit tight but i mean everybody if you get i get three adults to squeeze a little bit in order to fit people in the back here in the middle seat inside of this thing actually it's not as comfortable as the outboard but it's way more comfortable from what I remember from the 2023 model. It's kind of nice. Now, not much more headspace in the middle seat here, though. Like, I'm probably maxing out. I'm sitting, yeah, if I'm like sitting up a little bit, like maybe an inch, half an inch to an inch of headspace. So there's not a lot of space going on up overhead there, but still pretty nice. And then the seats can also be, that's new, slip forwards or backwards again. Oh, that's really nice. Full bench. That's really cool. So if you need to create a little bit more space for the cargo area, you've got the flexibility to be able to do it. But the second row seat, same beautiful highlights along the side, different speaker options available with your handle, and then also your window control there. 
up overhead, you've got a little handle hook and a light. And that's the same little speaker there too on the passenger side. So speaker, handle hook, and then the light. Now one really neat thing is that just along the back here, you might just be able to make it out, but you've got some USB power points. This is the first time Lincoln's done this. So two USB type C along both the driver and the passenger seat. It's like they've kind of taken a page of Kia's book where that would normally be along the side, but right into the seat. Lincoln, great job. There are some pockets behind both the driver passenger side there as well. And then down below, you've also got heated second row seats. So these aren't toggle switches up or down. They'd be button pushes in order to toggle it on or off. And then, yeah, I thought I saw that. There's also, yeah, a power point down there as well. So power points literally all over the place inside of this thing. And then the only thing to point out would be some cup holders there. Ooh, fancy. That's really neat little storage area there. That feels super premium. That's like a, that's a fairly heavy feel there. But I mean, the tiniest amount of space inside of this. I don't even know what you're going to store inside of that. No, well, still pretty neat though. And then how do you, oh, that is. All right. So there's one where you can lift up. There's a second where you can slide it out there instead. That is really neat. Huh, really neat. And that, oh, soft finish there. And then you've got all the anchor points, the top tether points are there as well. Filling up fuel inside of the Nautilus is straightforward and it's along the driver's side. Unlocked cover with a capless system. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation in this thing is also just regular 87 fuel. So just regular gas is all you need to use. But the horsepower and torque specs we were looking at under the hood are all that she was using a 94 octane. Do you need to use a 94? Now, not at all. You can get away with just using a regular 87. That's the minimum manufacturer's recommendation. But if you want the best possible performance, you want to use a 91 if it's in the budget. If not, go for the just regular fuel instead. But the question of whether you decide to go for the hybrid or the regular gas engine is going to come down to a matter of personal preference. And here's why. So let's look at the numbers for a second. To go to the hybrid, you're about 4,000 Canadian roughly to go to that hybrid instead you're also gonna get about 10% more power in comparison. Looking at fuel economy, the hybrid is also gonna use about 20 to 25-ish percent less fuel. So you get 10% more power, use 20 to 25% less fuel for four grand. So the question of whether or not it's worth it, it might be worth it for you if you're gonna hold on to this thing for four or five, six years or longer to go to that hybrid. But that one's going to be a matter of preference. The hybrid is technically newer technology. So it's going to be your call whether you go that route. But for the potential fuel savings, it could be worth it for the right person. I love the new rear end of the Nautilus. The lamps look great. There's a bar stretch right across the side there for your brake lights. It's got the rear wiper, reverse camera, and then the rear sensing system as well. So again, overall, that back end just put together nicely. This one doesn't have the available tow package. And I guess it's technically not a tow package. It's just a class one receiver that you can install aftermarket. And that's a dealer installed option, or you could do it yourself if you wanted to. But the class one receiver is about half of what the 2023 Nautilus can tow. So this thing is gonna max out at 1,750 pounds for towing. And that doesn't matter if you're in the two liter turbo or the two liter hybrid, they're maxing out at the exact same. So that's one thing to take into consideration. If you need your Lincoln to tow a little bit more, you can bump yourself up to the aviator. In that case, you're looking at around 5,000 plus pounds inside of the aviator instead. And then looking at the lift gate inside of this thing, you've got a few different options available. So you can use the key fob to open it. There's a button just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Underneath the second L in Lincoln, there's still a button there. And then you can also swipe your foot oh, for foot activated power instead. It's nice. Now this is as high up as the lift gate's gonna go inside of this thing. But if your garage is a little bit lower or if you can't reach the buttons to close, you could use your key fob, but you can also pull down and then push and hold the button there in order to set this thing at a unique height instead. So if you needed it, that is available as an option. And then in the back, you've got a nice new Lincoln scuff, or Nautilus scuff plate, I should say. Along the left-hand side, there's a 12 volt power point and then releases for your second row seats. So it looks like that's the same for the 23 to the 24, is that with those buttons, you can lower the seat and then you just have to manually lift it back up yourself. 
along the right hand side you've only got a little light and then this is just the regular carpeted liner you're going to find in the back and it does have a mini spare tire underneath so it's an 18 inch spare so it is a mini and then the jack stand is located just along the right side with a nice amount of storage space off to the left now if you wanted to let's say you pop a tire puncture a tire whatever the case may be you could change it out yourself if you want to but one of the nice things about being a lincoln owner is that you also have access to lincoln roadside assistance and that's good for the same length as the powertrain warranty so a six year 70,000 mile 110,000 kilometers call an 800 number they can help you change a tire if you also needed fuel that could happen winching services and a number of other things that's just one of the added benefits of being a lincoln owner and then if you need to fold down the second row seats but you don't actually need to get into the trunk it's just done along the second row seat here so you're going to pop inside and then there's a little lever release along the side you're going to pull that and down goes the bench and it's a 60 40 bench so 60 on the driver 40 on the passenger and then the cargo measurements that we're looking at are going right from where the lift gate would close to just in behind the armrest between the first row seats so if the driver's seat or passenger seat are forwards backwards a little bit more you'd gain a few extra inches or you'd lose a few extra just depending on how tall the drivers and passengers are and then closing the lift gate you can do it through the key fob you can swipe and kick underneath or just push a button in order to close and that was a look at the all new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. And I gotta say, I love what Lincoln's done with the 2024 model. I think it's gonna be a contender for a lot of people when you look at a five seat luxury SUV. But you can find a build link for this specific Nautilus down in the description, all the tech walkthrough videos and things like that, especially the contact details for Yorkdale Lincoln down below. But if you found this video useful, share it with someone if you think they might find it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care. On top of that, when you look at fuel economy, you're also losing... You're losing your basic warranty is going to be a four-year 50,000 mile or 80,000 kilometers with the powertrain getting knocked up, getting knocked up, getting moved up. <laughs>